Hey, Shalom Israel, this is Captain OC. I'm Senator Thayer. All right, today we have 15 minutes with the captains. Today we're going to go into politics. Today we are going to go into the, the topic of politics. So let's get John chapter 8 and verse 32. The book of John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. So Christ said that we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Now, today's topic is a topic that affects a lot of our brothers and sisters. Politics is very, very important in today's society. And not only in America, but all throughout the world. Because America has pushed their doctrines and their policies, which is the same thing as politics, throughout the four corners of the earth. Right. So with us waking up to our true nationality, we got to understand, is politics something that we should be concerned about? Is it a sin? Is it right? Is it wrong? Ultimately... Is it going to help us get the kingdom of heaven here on earth? Those are the questions we're going to dive into today with 15 minutes with the captains. So before we go, let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. I'm going to show you the origin of why you love to be a Democrat or why you love to be a Republican. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy thou not the oppressor. Do what? Envy thou not the oppressor. So the Bible says to envy thou not the oppressor. Understand, your whole understanding of, of politics, of being a Democrat, of being a Republican, it was taught to you by your oppressor. Read. And choose none of his ways. Now, the Bible is very specific. It says to do what? Envy thou not the oppressor uh -huh. and choose none of his ways. The Bible says to choose none of his ways. Now, you got a, you got a question. Hmm. Where did the Israelites learn to be Republican? Where do we learn to be a, uh, what is it, what is it, um, a liberal? Right. Where do we learn to be democratic? Where do we learn to be part of the Whig party? All these different uh, political parties. Where would this talk to us? These things were taught to you while you were enslaved. Right. While you were here in America, you learned the ways of your oppressor. And now, guess what? Now you believe that politics is your way of life. You have made politics your religion. All right? So, Vernet, let's see. The Bible speaks about everything because understand us wanting a president, us wanting a governor, us wanting all of these different political positions. This is nothing new than what's written already in the Bible. Right. Go to the book of first Samuel chapter eight and verse one. I'm going to show you the origin of that spirit of us wanting a man being put over us because it was never like that. God didn't set it up like that. God chose the men that he wanted to lead his people from the beginning. Right. All right. Read that. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. He made Israel. his sons what? He made his sons judges over Israel. Understand, the premier position in the past when we are walking in the Bible is to be a judge. Right. Because judge a judge position, you have a very clear set of lines. Guess what? According to the law, this is either sin or it's not sin. You're either guilty or not guilty according to the laws. When you go into politics, it's all about a certain stance that you will take on a certain uh, topic. The Bible does not talk about stances. The Bible talks about the laws of God. Right. Understand that when you get into politics, you sway away from the Bible and now you lean into your own understanding. The Bible tells you to do the exact opposite of that. He says, lean not unto thine own understanding. Right. Keep reading that though. Verse 2. Now, the name of his firstborn was Joel, uh -huh. and the name of his second, Abiah. Uh -huh. They were judges in Beersheba. Read. And his sons walked not in his ways, mm -hmm. but turned aside after Lucre. Read. And took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together uh -huh. and came to Samuel, Samuel unto Ramah. And he said unto them, Behold, thou art an... Thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Read. Now make us a king. Read that again. Now make us a king. Now make us a king. This is the spirit that have, that our people have been walking in since the days of Samuel. Right. We always wanted to set up a king over us. But God already warned us about that. And he made certain provisions for when that spirit was to come upon us. Right. Let's read about that. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17. Because in today's uh, political party, for you Israelites, I'm speaking to you Israelites, because there are some of you that believe that voting still has power hmm. and you understand who you are. Right. Understand, unless you're voting for a political candidate that is uh, sternly and strictly abiding in God's laws and pushing God's laws, you're not abiding in the scripture. Right. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 15. Uh-huh. 
Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, uh -huh. whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Read. From one from among thy brethren. One what? One from among thy brethren. Read. Shall thou set king over thee. Now, and before, what that was last, uh, the last um, two years ago, mm -hmm. when you had Barack Obama, before right. that, Nine times, well, ten times out of ten, you don't have a political candidate right. that's one of your brethren. Right. And furthermore, you being an Israelite, you understand your brothers are those that what? Keep the laws of God. Right. So there has never been a candidate that has strongly proclaimed for us to come back to our nationality and to keep God's laws. Right. Understand that. When you're, when you're voting for anything else, you're voting for us to remain in sin. Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. He speaks about this spirit that our people have. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Woe to the rebellious children, uh -huh. said the Lord. Read. That take counsel, but not of me. You see that? You take counsel, but not of God. You want to rely on your presidential candidate. Right. You want to rely on your city councilman. You want to rely on your state uh, governor. You don't want to take counsel of God. You're not asking for a priest. Has anybody said, hey, give us a new priest? No. Nope. Give us a new preacher. No. Nope. We don't want to. We don't want to have a spiritual solution to our problems. Right. Read. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. Read. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. That cover with a covering, but not of his spirit. Because what did we cover ourselves with? Being a Republican. We covered ourselves with being a liberal. We covered ourselves with uh, more advanced policies towards uh, policing and education reform, so on and so forth. That's the covering that you take. You refuse to take the covering of God. Read. But not of my spirit, uh -huh. that they may add sin to sin. You see that? You're adding sin unto sin. Read. That walk to go down into Egypt. That walk to go down into Egypt. Today we walk down what? Back into America. We go right back into the same system that said that, guess what? You're three-fifths of man. That said what? Slavery is legal. Right. That said what? That you can't even eat and drink in the same restaurants as a man that has lighter color melanin than you. That's the system that you're trying to change. It was not set up for you. Read. And have not asked at my mouth uh -huh. to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. Read. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. To do what? To trust in the shadow of Egypt. That's what you're doing. You trust in the shadow of Egypt when you're placing your vote. You think that your vote is going to change the, the problems that are hindering your community. Right. Instead of going to God. You would never do that. But you really believe that those men that you vote for, you think they're going to create change. Right. Read. Was that it on that? Uh, verse 3. Uh-huh. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. What? They read that again? Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Read. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Because guess what? A lot of you brothers and sisters were very, very confused when Barack Obama did not liberate us out of America. Right. A lot of you were confused when Mayor Gilliam was not voted the governor of Florida. Hmm. A lot of you are confused when you have black faces that are in high political positions and nothing changes in your community. Because God says this political system was going to be your confusion. Right. It was going to be your shame. Because that's not where your change is coming from. Open up the Bible. Never once has God said you're going to vote for the change in, in, in the liberation. Right. We didn't vote to be delivered out of Egypt. Nope. We didn't vote to be delivered from Greece. Nope. We didn't vote. The Most High God raised up prophets and change happened. Right. That's the only hope you have. This Bible. Jump down to uh, Psalm 62 and verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 62 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Trust not in oppression. Do what? Trust not in oppression. The Bible says to trust not in oppression. The system that we are under is a system of oppression. You can look, look at, look at the, 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 the jail, the education, the health care, so on and so forth. The system that we are in is a system of oppression. Right. You cannot trust in this system. And guess what? You might say, well, I don't trust in this system. That's why I vote. Right. That's not what we're saying. We're saying come out of the ways of America. America has taught you that philosophy of voting for change. Right. That's not written of in the scripture. All right, hold that. Go to uh, Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. So I pray that y'all understanding right now that voting is not a tradition or uh, in our culture. We never voted for leaders. Right. The Most High God set them up. Read that. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes as yet fell for our vain help. Our eyes have yet fell for our vain help. Read. And our watching 
We have watched for a nation. For a what? For a nation. Read. That could not save us. That's what you're doing when you're voting. You are waiting for a nation. You are waiting for America to rise up through its political parties right. and its political systems and its political reforms. And you're saying, please come and save us. Deliver us out of the situations that we're in. Hmm. Deliver us from our, our single parent households. Deliver us from uh, being uh, first first fire and last hide. Deliver us from being a reproach before the nations. America cannot do that. What you have to understand is this is not your rest. Right. You must be delivered out of this place. Christ didn't, Christ didn't go around and ask Caesar to, to, to liberate his people. Right. He understood the situation that he's in. Right. He understood, hey, this is, the place of our, this is the place of our captivity. We are in servitude right now. He understood that. Daniel understood that, so on and so forth. Only here in America have we tried to change the place that we were placed in captivity. Nowhere will you read. We always, we always sought to go back to our homeland. We never tried to change the place of our captivity. Right. Understand that we got to change our minds. From there, go to Second um, Timothy, chapter two and verse three, because dealing with that, because we said watching for a nation that could not save us. Understand when you get involved in the political system. You can go on all day and night on, on all of these different topics and subjects. You'll be all over the world. Right. And when you're doing that, you're losing focus on the Bible. You're losing focus on the issues that really matter. Teaching your people who they are and what they must do to recover from their sins. That's the whole mission. Read that. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Read. No man that warreth entangleth himself. With the affairs of this life. No man that wore what? Entangleth himself with the affairs of this and life. And that's all politics is. It's the affairs of this life. Right. Every issue, every four years, they vote and they take uh, uh, um, they take counsel on how should I how should I wage myself on this issue? How should I garner myself on this issue? How should I do myself on this issue? Those are the affairs of this life. You got to understand, being an Israelite, the only affairs we're worrying about is the nation of Israel. Right. And how to get delivered out of this captivity. How to wake up the 144,000 and bring back Christ the Messiah to reign on this face of the earth. That's our mission. That's the only thing that we should be worried about. Right. All right, from there, go to um, 1st Ezra chapter 5 and verse 72. Because dealing with politics, you'll deal with the affairs of this world. And what right. you'll find is, like I said, it's a loophole. This thing will have you distracted all day and night. If you, if you ever looked at, a, at a, a political candidate and you see their approach on all these different topics, there are hundreds, thousands of different things that they have to uh, present their view on how they deal with it. And what you'll find is these things further and further and further you away from the Bible. Right. You got that? Yes, sir. Read that. The book of First Ezra, chapter 5, verse 72. Uh-huh. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, Read. and holding them straight, hindered their building. Did what? Hindered their building. Read. And by their secret plots. And by what? And by their secret plots. Read. And popular persuasions. And their popular persuasions. Because Negroes face it. The only time you care about politics is once every four years. Right. And guess what? You get all up high and mighty about who you're going to vote for. And two weeks later, you forgot about who's the president and who isn't the president. Right. You're back to worrying about smoking blacks. You're back to selling drugs to your neighbors. You're back to going to the club. Right. These are all popular persuasions to get your mind off of the real issues. Understand that. The real issue is that you don't know who you are. Right. The real issue is that your people are hated across all the world and you don't have a clue as to why. The real issue is that Jesus Christ is being portrayed as a white man throughout the four corners of the earth and you're not standing up to change that. Right. Those are the things that are hindering us. But yet you're sitting here worrying about which political candidate and how they feel about government reform. Hmm. How do they feel about uh, uh, creating jobs or not creating jobs? Right. That's not going to change your outlook. That's not going to change your eternity. That's what we need to be worried about. How are we going to get our children delivered out of this place called America? Right. Or out of whatever place you're, you're in that's being governed by America one way or the other? How are we going to create the end of this uh, uh, system that we have set up upon us? And it's not going to come through government. Right. It's going to come through a spiritual change, a spiritual awakening. From there, 
Go to Romans 13. Because you might say, well, you're speaking real heavily about politics and government. So, obviously, you don't respect the government, right? right? You're a right. rebel. Right. That's not the case. Understand. We understand one person, one person has control of how things play. And it's not men. It's God. Right. That's right. I said it. It's God. God controlled Pharaoh. Yep. God controlled uh, uh who was it, uh, Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Right. God controlled Cyrus. All the kings of the earth, they are ruled by God. Right. Your vote is not going to play a part in how they decide on major decisions. God has to say on that. Read that. The book of Rome, Romans, chapter 13, verse 1. Uh -huh. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Let what? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Now, the Bible says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. What? Read for there is no power but of God. You see that? There is no power but of God. So we don't care whether the whether the president is Republican. Right. We don't care if he's a liberal. We don't care if he's a racist. I don't care who it is. Understand, there's no power set up on the face of the earth that is not set up by God. Right. But what y'all fail to understand is that when you're not keeping the commandments, you don't see it like that. You do not see it like that. From there, because I don't even want to read the rest of that. Go to 2 Timothy. Oh, is it First Timothy? First Timothy, I think it was, chapter two and verse one and two. The only thing we want out of, out of our politicians is that we are able to push this truth on high level. I could care less about his stance on on abortion or on uh, gun reform or on health uh, health issues. I could care less. Right. I'm going to govern my nation by the laws of God. That's what you should be concerned with as well. Read that. The book of First Timothy, chapter two, verse one. Uh huh. I exhort therefore. That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Be made for all men, read. For kings. For what? For kings. For presidents, read. And for all that are in authority. And for what? And for all that are in authority. This is what we pray, that everybody that's in authority, I don't care if you're Esau, I don't care if you're Ishmael, it doesn't matter. Because when you're in authority, guess who put you there? The God of Israel, that's read. Right. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. That what? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. That is all the Israelites seek for. That we lead a quiet and peaceable life. We understand why you're in the positions you are. Right. We don't want to cause you no harm. But understand, when Christ returns, we're going to be in a rulership position. We understand that. This is not our rest. That's why you don't see us getting together reforms and asking people to vote for us. Right. <laughs> when Christ returns, he's not taking up a vote. You're not going to have to register to, 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 to vote for Christ. Right. You're going to submit when he when he cracks the sky. Understand that. From there, go to Isaiah chapter two and verse two. So in closing, we want to we want to I want to I want y'all to understand. When you deal with politics, you are dealing with personal beliefs on different issues. The 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 God of this Bible does not care about how we feel. Right. He does not care about how we think. The only thing he's concerned about is the teaching of God's laws. And understand, in the kingdom to come, the only policy that's going to be pushed, the only politics that's going to be pushed is the laws of God. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established uh -huh. in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Read. And all nations shall flow unto it. All nations going to flow unto it. Read. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, uh -huh. to the house of the God of Jacob, uh -huh. and he will teach us of his ways. And what? And he will teach us of his ways. Read. And we will walk in his path. And, huh? and we will walk in his path. Read. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. For what? Out of Zion shall go forth the law. No, politics. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. Understand, and when Christ's kingdom is set up, the only policy that's going to be set up, the only politics that's going to be pushed is God's law. That's right. So that's what we're learning right now. Understand, when 144,000 men are sealed with the laws of God, that's when the end is going to come. All right, so that was 15 minutes with the captains. I pray you were edified with the class. Shalom. Shalom.
working so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew, it sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sound wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.